So tell us about the Legends of Oz, the Wicked West. Sure, it's our Western reimagining of the Wizard of Oz. So instead of ruby slippers, Dorothy has ruby spurs, ruby bullets. Toto's her horse. Uh, it still has all the fantasy stuff in it that you'd expect from Oz, the flying monkeys, the witches, the haunted forest, the wizard, of course. But Oz as a world is grounded in the Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> and what is it about Oz that, that captured your imagination so much? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess for me, uh, you know, I'm a 40 plus year old dude. So back in the day, you know, it was always an event when Oz was on TV. You know, it came on like once a year. Everybody came home, watched Wizard of Oz on TV. So it was kind of something that I guess already kind of hung around in the back of my mind for a while. And so a few years back, well, I guess it's many years back now, almost maybe five years, um, I was looking for tickets to go see uh, the play Wicked. And so I was being inundated with that image of Elphaba with her head down and the hat over her eyes. And so when I do all these shows, uh, I drive to most of them. And so back then I was driving back from a show in uh, Phoenix, going through New Mexico. It was all tumbleweeds and cactus and desert. And um, for whatever reason, all of that stuff I was seeing started to blend with that picture of Alphaba in my head. And so the, uh, the witch's hat became a cowboy hat. Um, Alphaba herself became Dorothy because I thought, well, it would be great to have Dorothy to be a cowgirl. But if she's going to be a cowgirl, she can't wear ruby slippers. What's the equivalent? You know, well, ruby spurs would be cool. Um, Toto could probably be a dog, but she's obviously going to have to ride a horse. So Toto became the horse. Uh, and it just sort of steamrolled from there, you know. And the interesting part is, though, is that Every time I came to a part that I, I had to figure out how to westernize, it was almost easy. You know, it was almost as if this story that everyone knows one particular way, it's almost as it was designed to be adapted in other, in other formats. You know, and a lot of people have done that. Oz has been around for a long time, obviously. Um, and, and there's been all kinds of, you know, dark interpretations and comedy interpretations and cartoon interpretations and everything. Um, and so, to me, I, you know, it, it fits right into what other people have done as far as adapting it. But it is, as far as I understand and from what everybody else tells me, it's completely different than anything else anybody's ever done with Oz. And uh, it's even gotten me to the point where um, I'm invited every year to a show called Oz Stravaganza in New York, um, where they put on a show... That's the hometown of uh, L. Frank Baum, who wrote The Wizard of Oz, the original books. So they invite me out there every year. Um, and it's and that really is a, a very, you know, it's obviously an Oz-centric show, but it's very traditional, too. It's like the books, the movies. I mean, this is what we do. And so when I'm out there with my, my new thing, um, the first couple of times it was like, you know, I had to kind of like show these guys, this is for real. You know, I'm not just like making up some weird thing. All of my inspiration came directly from what you guys love, the books, which was where I went. As soon as I had my idea, first thing I did was read all of his books. And so I wanted all of my inspiration to come directly from him. And uh, so far it's been great. It's been one of our best sellers for years. And I'm excited to have Aspen uh, reprinting it and bringing it out. Uh, so this is sort of a, a re-release and we're getting some bonus material. Can correct. you tell us yeah. about that? What Aspen is doing is taking our original miniseries, the original six issue miniseries, we're doing some remastering, we're cleaning up the dialogue, um, we're, we're fixing some artistic little things that bugged me over the years. You know, I'm sort of George Lucasing it, but you know, no sock puppets in there or anything. So, but what we're also getting to do, which is really cool, is I get to add some bonus material in it. So it's not just the original story. So if people have read this before, they're gonna get a kind of a cleaned up version of what they already know, but there's also a brand new backup story in the at the end of it um, that I'm going back now and telling the origin story of what I'm calling the Peacekeeper of Oz, which are the original four witches of Oz in our story, and sort of the origins of their their ruby. Uh, well, Dorothy has ruby guns, but it's ruby and sapphire and onyx, all the all the jewel handled pistols and stuff, and sort of the magic and where all that came from. So I get to kind of go back and tell that story, which I might not have really been able to tell previously because once I told my story, we were just off and going. So being able to go backwards and put a little bit of history back into it is going to be really cool. So Aspen Comics is such a great company, and we're mm -hmm. curious if there's anything new that you guys are going to be releasing as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, it, we're, we're at the point right now in the year where we start to look at what next year is going to be. So we don't know exactly what's happening, um, but I, we know that Ursa Minor is going to be next on the slate as far as the, the reprints that we're doing. Um, but there's already the, we're already kind of trying to figure out you know, how do we get new stuff? It's one of the reasons we did Scheherazade first, because there's only five issues of it. So we can do the five issues, get it remastered, get it out, get the Aspen fans involved. 
and then get to a new series. So we definitely have that. That is definitely in the works. Um, we have some spin-off stuff from Oz that we were going to do as Big Dog Inc. right before the Aspen merger was about to start. So there's a TikTok miniseries that we're going to do, things like that. So it's just a matter of, of figuring out the schedule, the release schedule, because we have Big Dog Inc. books we want to release, but Aspen has their stuff they want to release too. We don't want to compete with each other with you know five number ones in the same month or anything. So it's just a matter of kind of looking at what 2016 is. Let's do one here, one here, one here, one here. And uh, there's definitely new stuff coming. Um, the immediate new stuff will be TikTok. That, that's probably the first thing that we'll see. I would imagine we'll probably roll that out right after the Oz, um, the Oz remastering is done. So like springtime sometime, we'll have that out. Uh, and then after that, you know, I'm looking to get Critter back out and, and expand the universe there as well. Uh, so, you know, the, the term Critterverse has been tossed around a little bit. They seem to really think that the, the, the superhero universe we have is, uh, is, is ripe for the pickings, as they say, uh, which excites me to no end because I, that was the book that I started with. So the more we can do with her, the better.